And let's not forget to empty the data list when we're done. And that's it. Run. I'll scan the first barcode, the data will show up on the screen, and I'll scan the next barcode, and voila, the printing starts. Hey, what's up? Jarvis from Postdeck here. In this new series, I'll be walking you through the developmental process of Oxcript for a variety of use cases and applications. In this first episode, we'll be taking a look at one of the most common and easiest to implement use cases, scan and print. The barcode scanner is going to be attached directly to the printer, and every time new data is scanned in, a label with the corresponding information will be printed. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing will be to open up an IDE of your choice. I'm going to be using VS Code, but you obviously have the freedom to use whichever one you would like. And as you can see here, I've already opened up a folder called demo and created a file called scan and print where the majority of the code is going to live in. Now, before we get to actual coding, let's first install the dependencies. Go into your terminal and type pipe3 install oxt script. As you can see, the requirements are already satisfied for me. And actually, for running the script on your printer, installing the dependency on your device is actually completely not necessary. And it's only there to help your IDE and to make your software development process a little bit easier. Okay. So now that we have it installed, simply import it like so. Now, before we go any further, let's first talk about what we need to display on the printer's UI. In this case, we will simply need a title to indicate which barcode it is, and also a text box to display the information for that corresponding barcode. We will need two of these elements, one for each barcode. We can also add a button to initiate the printing, but for this use case, we'll just set it to print after two successful scans, so a button wouldn't be necessary. Let's jump back into VS Code. Now that we have determined exactly what we need on the user interface, we can achieve it pretty simply with the PTK UI text box right here. I'm going to give it the title of barcode one for the first one. And I am going to leave the value as empty as we'll be updating that later when we're scanning in the data. To create two of these, I'm just going to copy that, bam, put it right here, change that to barcode two and we're done. That's going to be all the UI elements we're going to need. Now to properly display these elements onto a printer page, we're going to need to be, we're going to need to wrap it in a PTK page function and the elements are going to be passed in as parameters like so. Okay. Now a printer can easily support multiple pages. So we need to wrap it in a PTK UI init to tell the printer, Hey, we're only going to have one page for this for this script. And that's all we're going to need to do for the UI element side of the script development. Let's run that code in the printer and see what it looks like. For the next part, we're gonna be going over how to debug directly on the printer using the Postdeck Companion app. If you've seen this part before, feel free to skip ahead, but to transfer file or to debug, we're going to need the Postdeck Companion app. It is completely free, available for both Mac and Windows, and to download it, the link is gonna be in the description of this video. So this is what the app looks like. To connect to the printer or printers, simply click on connect right here and all the available printers will show up right here. This includes USB, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, Bluetooth. They can all be accessed right here directly. You can also connect multiple printers at the same time for batch file transfers. But in this case, let's just connect the one and use it for debugging. Okay. Now that it's connected, let's go over to Oxscript, click on open folders and select the folder that you're currently working on. Now with the folder that we were working on open, Simply go over to the file, click on it, and then on the top right, click Execute. As you can see, the printer UI is exactly as expected. The value is still empty as we haven't implemented the logic to update the UI. Let's take a look at that really quick. So the logic of this program is relatively straightforward. We'll have a main loop that constantly tries to check for data from the USB. If there's data, update the user interface, and if there has been two successful scans, we can go ahead and print the label. To start, I'll first create a list called data to hold all the data we're going to scan in. Okay. Next, let's add the main loop, which is going to be a simple while true loop. And at the beginning of the loop, we'll certainly want to get the latest port data. We could do so by using scanned equals to PTK get port data. And I'm going to set the port equals to USB host right here. Okay. Now, when the function returns, let's make sure that it wasn't because the function timed out and actually received data. To do so, we're just going to add an if statement right here, if scanned 
does not equal to negative one. That means the data is scanned in correctly and we can use it to update our user interface. To do so, we're gonna to need to use the controllers returned by the user interface initiation function. We will assign a variable called controller right here and return the function and the return value of the function is usually a map. But in this case, we only have two elements. So I'm going to convert it to a list right here so that we can work with it a little bit easier. We will look through the controllers with for loop like so with i in range of length of the controllers. I'm just gonna go inside and check it. So if the length of the data is equal equals to i, we're going to update the controller at the corresponding position. So in this case, if there's no data inside scanned data, then that means it's the first barcode, the data for the first barcode, and it's going to go towards the first barcode. And if there's already a barcode inside of data, then that means that the new one that we just scanned in is data meant for the second barcode. And we can update both of them using the simple code right here. Now, after the first iteration of the value field, both of the barcodes will be filled. We want to be able to clearly indicate to the user on the second iteration that the iteration has started over again. And we can do so by clearing the value of the second barcode when the first barcode is scanned again. And to do so, we're going to add an else if statement right here. If i is larger than the length of data and to help with performance just a little bit, we can check to make sure that the controller value is not already empty. So if it's not empty and it is the second barcode, we're going to update it to be empty. Now let's not forget to append the scanned data when we're done checking for the conditions so that it will work for multiple iterations. At this point, we just need to check when we have scanned in two barcodes and printed. To do so, we just need to check for when if the length of data is equal or greater than two. And our print statement can go right there. Now, to generate a design for the label to be printed, we can certainly go the old fashioned route of actually writing out everything in code, but I'm way too lazy for that. Let's go into Bartender and finish up my label design over there, and I'm going to select Print to File. This will give me a file that looks like this. Now, you might ask, how can I change the data in the file? It's already set. Well, that's certainly a big advantage when it comes to Python. Data manipulation and parsing is incredibly easy. When generating the file, I left the data field that we're going to modify as aux script input one and two. To update them, simply use the ptk update all form variable function. Be sure to give it the name of your form command and make sure that your form file is actually in the same directory as your script file. And also be sure to update the actual inputs like so, okay. Now the input one and input two is the name that I actually gave the data field to be replaced when generating the form file. Now um, let's make sure that the command is set to a variable that is ready to be sent to the printer through ptk send command to printer. Oh, and let's not forget to empty the data list when we're done. And that's it, we're done. Let's see the code in action. So the UI is exactly as we programmed. I'll scan the first barcode, the data will show up on the screen, and I'll scan the next barcode and voila, the printing starts. This is only a very rudimentary example of what you can do with Oxgrip. There are a lot of rooms for customization. For example, scan four barcodes instead of two, log the scanned data into Excel file, or send them to a MySQL database after printing. There are a lot of flexibilities in terms of what you can do with Oxgrip, and I certainly will be showing you a lot more use cases in the future. Please like and comment if you have any questions. Stay tuned for the tutorials coming very soon. I'll see you in the next one.